Hi everyone, I'm Alexa, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create an API using Next.js. Next.js is a web framework specifically for React. It offers a ton of features that React doesn't have out of the box, like image load optimization, file system routing, different rendering strategies, and best of all, Next gives developers the ability to build both their front end and back end within the same place. And this makes Next a full stack framework. In this video, we're not gonna be concerned with the front end, we're just going to implement an API, which is part of the back end and go through those basics. The first step is you wanna open some terminal application and you wanna create a Next project. You can do this by using the command npx create next app and here it's doing it for me very similar to creating a react app if you've ever done that before and then after that you want to put the name of the directory you want your project to live in in this case i want it to be called next-api also this is assuming you have node installed as well as npm you can press enter here and it's going to prompt you a bunch of times. If you're an experienced dev, choose what you like. If you've never created a Next project before, you can just use the configuration I use. We're gonna say no to TypeScript, yes to ESLint. Um, typically, I say yes to the source directory because it's similar to how other frameworks work. So I'm gonna say yes. Experimental app directory, let's keep that as no alias, we can keep that, and then it's gonna go and install our app for us. Okay, so I'm gonna open this in VS Code. So here we have our project open. You're gonna see a lot of folders and files, but the first thing we wanna do is um, in our terminal here, we're gonna do npm run dev, and this is gonna start the development server. So if you option click this, localhost or just go to localhost 3000 in your web browser this is basically pulling up our project this is what our project looks like right now so we're good it built correctly let's talk about where the api actually lives in a next.js project here you can see we have a ton of folders but we're really concerned with this source folder and within this source folder we have this pages directory and if you ever have worked with Next.js, you know the pages directory is very important. That's where all of this stuff goes. So we're gonna open this. And inside of this pages directory, we have a directory called API. And as you can probably tell, this is where all of our API endpoints will exist. And if we look at this hello.js file, we can see that it's um, exporting a function called handler and it's doing some logic in here. The question that arises is how can we hit this endpoint? And if we go back to our server and we type in API slash hello, we're gonna get something like this. And this is the response that our function returned. So if I change this to like Alexa, I can go back here, reload this, and it's gonna change. So we are hitting that endpoint. From here, we wanna notice that Next uses the tree of folders and files to represent routes or endpoints. So if I wanted to create a route that looks something like API slash users, what I would do is in this API folder, I would create a new folder called users. And inside of here, since I just want to hit the index route, I would put a file in here called index.js. The index route is when you just have slash after users. And then from here, I would be able to create a handler function in this file. And a handler function is where we actually perform the logic. So this is the function that gets run when we request and hit our endpoint, and this handler is gonna send a response back as well. So export default function handler. We have two parameters here, rec and res. Notice that these two parameters are actually objects. 
rec contains all the info and methods related to the request object and res contains all the stuff related to the response object. And we can look at the docs to see all the info related to these two variables or two arguments that were given. And then here we want to return a response. So we can do res.json. JSON is a method of res. And what it does, it sends back JSON to our client or whatever is requesting this server endpoint. So we're just going to send back a thing that says name Alexa, save that, go back and here we're going to hit that route. So we would get to it with users and then slash because it's the index route and we would hit it. And notice that we don't put slash index here. It's going to say page not found because that's not a thing. But um, we hit this route like that. If we want an endpoint for a single user, if we were building our API restfully, we would probably do something like API slash users and then like some sort of ID or unique identifier would be in the next slash. And this is called a dynamic route because it's able to match multiple URLs to a single endpoint. So what we want to do here is inside of this users folder, we want to obviously put a file in there. And for this example, I'm just going to use the name of a person or the name of a user as our unique identifier. And the name is the thing that's going to be changed. So what we can do is to make that endpoint sort of variable, we would use these brackets. So we'd say name and then dot JS. And you can think of name as a variable we can use in our handler. And the way we access this is first, let's export default function handler rec res. And in here, the way that we're going to be able to access that specific information in the URL you know, if we wanted to query a database or we wanted to display this information back to the user, what we could do is access this variable in the rec.query key. There's two ways to do this. You can uh, create a variable called name and set it equal to rec.query and then dot name. The reason why it's a dot name is because that's what we named our file here. If we called it like ID, we would have to put ID here. That's one way to do it. And this will work just fine. Res dot, let's just send it this time. This means it's not really formatted in a specific way, but we're just going to send this. And when we do that, we go back to our server here, API slash users and then slash Alexa. It's going to return back Alexa, but notice if I put something else, it's going to return back that specific text. So it's actually extracting the data from the URL. Thus, it's a dynamic route. Also, if you want to be fancy or look a little cleaner, you could um, destructure the name out of the rec.query, rec.query, and Hopefully this saves well, and it'll do the same thing. Yep. I typically do it like this just because it looks a little nicer. And if you had multiple of these bracket files, dynamic variables in your URL, you would also access them through rec.query. And also if you had um, stuff appended to the URL in a query string format, you would do that and access those things through rec.query. Another thing I would like to talk about is how some backend frameworks like Express will give you specific methods to handle different HTTP verbs. So like get, post, patch, put, you'll have to specify different functions for those in Express, if you've ever used that before. Next doesn't actually do this. They just have one handler for each route. And this is sort of a problem because 
we want to be able to perform different functionality on different HTTP verbs. If we have a get request going to this name route, we just want to get this person's name. But if we have a post request, we might want to be updating the person's name. And so we want to make sure we differentiate between those different HTTP methods. We can do this in Next.js. I mean, if we weren't able to do that, that would be kind of crazy. But what you can do is create if statements and use the rec.method property to differentiate between get and post and patch and all those different types of HTTP requests. So let's say in this route, I wanted to do something when it was a get request. I would do if rec.method equals get, all in uppercase. Then what I would do is return res.send, and I'll just say get. And else if the rec.method was equal to post, we might again do something else. So here I'm gonna put post. If it's neither of the if it's neither of these, you should definitely have a final return here, like res.send. Or maybe unsupported request type method I'm writing error messages yeah so our browser makes get requests but if we had something else like postman which is a platform for sending all different types of requests we could test this out and see that it does in fact go to this if the request method is post so you can use these if statements to differentiate between the different http requests and perform different logic that's going to be all for this tutorial. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed. And I hope this gives you a starting point for creating APIs using Next.js. If you would like to see more web development tutorials, make sure to let me know in the comments. See you guys.